Dogumentary TV, producing the best breed documentaries on YouTube. Hi, I'm Devette Fournier, and I am a proud owner of the American Bulldog breed. I'm a small boutique breeder here in Northern California, and I've been breeding these beautiful creatures for 21 years. I bought my very first bulldog in 1996 just by happen chance I was looking for what I thought to be an English bulldog um, and I showed up to somebody's house and it was this really short English bulldog and I was looking for what I thought to be the English bulldog which is now the American Bulldogs. I had previously been a breeder and a shower of Afghans and I have to say once you own one of these American Bulldogs you're an American Bulldog lover for life. Best breed ever. Great temperaments. One of the things we loved about the breed when we first got ours is that they're great with children, but in, on the flip side, you could take them hiking, uh, hunting, do many things with the breed. It was not a sissy breed by any means. <laughs> you know, um, at first, I just watching them with people and family, they just are very in tune with the human. I mean, you don't have to say anything. They just quickly are listening and learning and following your lead but after I owned them for a while I started doing a lot more studies on them and learning a little more about them and I was always mesmerized by the fact that you could take your American Bulldog out wild boar hunting and it'll pull down a wild boar till you get over there and get it and then an hour later after you give it a bath clean it up it'll be sitting next to your two-year-old watching TV it just has the ability to be a working dog and have the ability to be a gentle giant. It started in the late 1700s, early 1800s, and they were all called uh, English Bulldogs. And if you look at a lot of the old paintings and the pottery back then of the, of the breed, it looks like what we see now, an American Bulldog. The settlers brought over the working farm dogs with them, and that's what we now know was named later the American Bulldog, or coined the American Bulldog by a couple gentlemen who in the late early 60s decided they were going to bring this breed back from extinction. And that was uh, J.D. Johnson and Alan Scott. And they have, there's two different types. So Johnson, which is a little more bully, bigger head, shorter snout. Scott, really athletic, lean, you know, the actual working breed. I just had the passion for the bigger head, wider chest, and I wasn't gonna be using them for a working breed, even though that's what they are. They were just gonna be my family pet, and I was gonna sell them to families, and I just like the look of the Johnson. My dogs do wanna work. They have a task. They love it when you give them a task, but at the same time, they're okay just chilling, you know? And I haven't owned a Scott before, but just, I mean, anytime you have a dog that's a uh, you know, 60, 80 pounds working dog that's active on the farm, you're gonna have a little bit more high-strung dog for sure. My husband and I have a vineyard here. We have five acres, and that's really when we picked up uh, the breeding a little bit because living in town, we would just had one or two. Once we moved on the property, um, uh, it allowed the dogs to be a part of all the farm work. We actually used to strap some uh, uh, trailers to them and have them go up and down with our buckets when we pick grapes and put the grapes in the buckets. They liked that. The dogs thought that was fun. But for the most part, they get their exercise just playing on five acres. You know, they like to fetch and do all the things that normal dogs do, and they like to sit in your lap. But at the same time, if they see a predator, they pay attention and they bark. Oh, we had raccoons, cats, coyotes. You know, we first, first moved here, lots of raccoons and lots of coyotes. But now that they're here, and walking around and the male dogs pee everywhere, that kind of keeps them all on the neighbor's property instead of ours, so that's kind of nice, yeah. So on top of being our favorite pets, they are meant to be our, our estate guardians. They really do watch the property for us when we're not here. Nobody better enter our property without us here. They will take care of business for sure. Uh, but their looks and their intimidation usually keep people off in itself. So we're pretty lucky with that. Our dogs in particular, and probably most American Bulldogs, people that are gonna buy dogs, are gonna be family dogs. They're not gonna be for hunting and working on the farm. Most are family dogs, just like our dogs. They're welcome to come in the house. Like any dog that's your pet, they would definitely let, live in the house if you let them. But um, no, they can come in the house, but they do like to spend majority of the daylight outside, running around, playing, 
being outside. But at nighttime, they want to come in where we're at and cuddle on their little dog beds. Even though we have huge dog houses with air conditioning and heating for them, those usually get used when we're breeding. For the most part, they like to be inside getting the pets, you know, being a family dog. Our daily routine of our pets are that we wake up in the morning and there they are lit, waiting for us in the living room floor on their dog beds. And that's their, where they are when we go to bed at night. We have fun playing with them outside and they like to play outside, but they really aren't meant to be left out all day. They are companion dogs they like to be with. So um, I'm very comfortable. My grandchildren come around, other children come around and they'll play very gentle with the children. And it's not that I've taught them that, but they just instinctively know how to be that. But um, it's important that you understand that you have to have a lot of time spent with the dog to make it a social family dog. You can't just put it in your backyard and then expect it to be social. Well, the main rules, we, are, we start as a puppy stage with all the basic sit, lay, stay, you know, down from jumping on people. Uh, they're quite puppy-like for longer years than most breeds. They'll be a puppy-like for four years. So, but by the time they're a year old, they're up to 100 pounds. You can't have them jumping on people. So um, our main thing is that we teach them not to jump. Um, we teach them to, to uh, sit anytime we want to give them a treat. We don't just give them things. They have to kind of work, and they like that. They like to work or have a task for their reward. Um, but their main job is really to keep us company and patrol the property for us. When we have a litter of pups here, uh, we do it, my husband and I do it because we love the breed and we will segment four months out of the year that we have time to actually dedicate from the pregnancy all the way through till the puppy's eight weeks old. And um, we spend a lot of time with the dogs and we uh, socialize them. It, it can't be a dog that you just put to the side and you put it in the backyard and you don't train it from the beginning. They actually need all their training up front. The first six months is crucial for how they'll be the rest of their lives, you know. Um, and so in our orientation, we go through how to give them commands and not use the word no, for instance. Each word means something for the dog to do. If everybody in the house, especially have a bunch of kids and a busy family, everybody's saying no to the dog, the dog gets confused. These are a working breed. You can't put a leash on their collar. They're gonna pull, and they're instinctively meant to pull weight and pull down bulls and pull wagons and things on farms. So you have to put them in a harness that clips from the front and not from the back. Simple things like that that'll make your dog nice to walk or your dog that pulls you down the road, who instinctively, if you put something on its back back here, it's gonna wanna pull you. Make sure that the dog has a good foundation with the family so we're not rehoming it. The perfect owner for any dog that I'm gonna to sell to a family would be somebody that has children, um, also has other dogs, especially maybe another American Bulldog, um, somebody that's owned a bully breed before, that's pretty important. I won't sell my dogs to somebody who hasn't owned a bully breed that, that understands their temperament and their needs. I like the dog to be with kids or with another group of dogs. Like my dogs are with each other when we're not home, they're not lonely. So, um, but I won't sell it to too many people unless they have those certain qualifications, especially family dog. You know, I get a lot of people call me and say, you know, I want to buy a dog and I want to have it be my jogging dog. And I, I, I will tell them, well, these dogs can run and they can run short and fast, but they're not long-term jogging dogs. So this would not be what you would want to get this dog for. So, you know, um, but there are people that say, I want a protection dog. I'm a firefighter, I'm a police officer. I get quite a few police officers and firefighters that have these long shifts. And so they want a dog that's intimidating and stays home with the family and can be with the kids, but then the wife can take it for a walk with the kids. And that's, that's really important for a, a family dog, I think, because they are meant to protect. Well, it's important to socialize this breed. And the reason is um, when you first get them home, you do have to keep them close at home until they've gotten all four of their vaccinations. Um, there's something I teach in my course when you pick up your puppies that between the age of 10 weeks and 12 weeks, you must keep their environment very serene. No loud noises, no popping of bags, slamming of doors, gunshots, loud, because this is that portion of the brain that develops. If there's anything that scares them in that two weeks, it sticks with them for life. But once you pass the 12 week mark, they can be molded into anything that you want. And I always tell people, if you can get your dog to meet 100 people 
and 200 dogs in the first years of its life, that'll be the most social dog you'll ever have. They need to be socialized from a young age and with as many people, just meet and greet, even going out in public. They don't necessarily have to touch the dog or see the dog, but the dog needs to see people and consider that to be normal. This exercise, an activity for this dog would be, um, yes, walks. They're a large muscle dog. They need to be walked uh, every day. Um, we have a toy called the wolf stick, essentially a stuffed animal on the end of a string on a fishing pole. And you can give your dog 30 minutes of exercise in four minutes with this particular instrument. So even though my dogs have five acres to run, we on a daily basis pull out that wolf stick and spend five minutes with each dog to get their muscles really burning because they do need that. My dogs are on a grain feed diet. Um, this is important because any breed, but especially in a large mass breed like this where there's a lot of muscle mass, they are carnivores by genetics. They eat vegetables and meat. So a lot of these dog foods have rice and grains and fillers in them. So our dogs only eat grain free and bulldogs in particular are a little gassy so we don't allow them to have lamb because lamb makes them gassy and it's not bad for them but it's sure bad for you if you're sitting around watching TV. <laughs> so we stick to the uh, fish and the bison and the prairie, that type of thing. We use Nutrisource, but you can use anything as long as it's grain free. And also with Nutrisource, it has 500 milligrams of glucosamine in each serving, which is super important for large breed animal to have that in their joints. We as a boutique breeder, we have always kept only about four dogs, three females and a male around. The two males around, then you have to kennel them. And we kind of like our dogs being pets as well as our stud dogs, so we tend to keep one male around and three females. So right now we have two females and one male. Uh, our senior citizen, she passed away uh, shortly uh, ago, Miss Fiona, who we still have, who is seven. Her mommy passed away. Um, we have Cricket, who is now four. She's uh, the one that has a two-year waiting list for her puppies already. And our dear Hank the Tank, he's uh, three and a half years old. He's 128 pounds. He is uh, definitely Johnson. He comes out of a uh, Jose Lopez, which is a very well-known breeder for 30 years, uh, man stoppers. Um, Hank has got amber eyes. He's uh, more of a red. We call him red and white with amber eyes. Super mellow. I'll never forget when I got him for the very first time. I met Mr. Uh, Lopez, who had moved here from out of state. He moved to California and took, brought all his dogs with him. He had a job transfer, or his wife did or something. And they were all being housed at his friend's horse ranch. And I go there and there's all these male dogs in this arena, barking and barking. And I see this white dog just sitting at the top of five tire, tires, not barking, not being affected by anything by the chaos. And I said, I don't know when that dog's gonna have a puppy, but when that dog up there on the mound Obi-Wan is his name, has a dog. I want a dog from him. That's going to be my next male stud. So that's where Hank the Tank comes from. <laughs> if I'm not here, he is Mr. On Guard. He's very intimidating looking. And the girls who are a little bit more, uh, more of a watchdog, if you will, if the girls run, he's on it. If they're not doing much activity, he doesn't do much activity. But uh, when it's time to be serious, he's pretty intimidating dog but at the same time like I said I can have my four-year-old granddaughter crawling on him riding on him being a family dog and they are not even here all the time but he just instinctively knows as soon as they get here be gentle well, let's talk about Miss Fiona she we call her our princess Fiona we actually kept her for a very special reason her mom also who just recently passed away his, was one of our breeding females. And her very, very first litter in 2009 is where Princess Fiona comes from. And we knew that we wanted a male stud, so we paid J.D. Johnson Kennels, Zacharu, to be the stud for our Malibu, which is where Princess Fiona comes in. And so she has a pretty incredible uh, bloodline behind her as well. She's uh, all white. Uh, Princess Fiona means basically uh, white beauty in Gaelic and white wine in Latin. And we do grow white wine on our vineyards, so that's how she got her name. Cricket, we have Cricket, Miss Cricket. Miss Cricket is our now uh, leading breeding dog. She makes quite large females. <laughs> and ironically, she's a special gift because her entire litter, because the lady didn't know what she was doing, uh, died of parvo. 
and she's the only survivor. And it was just because by chance I picked her up a little bit earlier than everybody else and had removed her from the scene. And apparently uh, the rest of the dogs were there for another couple weeks and a visiting dog came onto the property and tracked Parvo and they all were put down to sleep. So she's a lonely survivor. So we call her a pretty special dog. So in general, the American Bulldog, if I could advise anybody uh, for a family pet, I would highly encourage you. I mean, we bought our very first one 20 years ago, 21 years ago, and never looked back. Absolutely the best breed you'll ever own. I get a lot of folks calling me on the phone and just telling me, this is the best dog I've ever owned, and I've owned many breeds. They are so conducive for family, for protection. Um, they're loving, they're strong. They are working dogs. There's a lot of very good things about them. And um, I would, that's the reason I started breeding. I wanted other people to have the opportunity to have this dog, this breed in their family because they are great family dogs. And I would highly encourage it. However, like with any large breed, you need to do your homework. That's why my website was put there, uh, American Bulldog Farm, because we live on a farm. Not because we're not a breeding farm, but because we live on a farm and it's there for, there's a lot of good information on my website. And now with social media and out there on YouTube, plenty of information about the breed. Do your homework, make sure it's perfect for your family. It's perfect for our family, we love them. They're the best thing ever, but not for everybody, yeah.